I think that I've been very unlucky every year with rule changes. Previous years, if you'd finished top five, you didn't have to do the Opens or Regionals, you qualified straight to the Games. So, in 2012, with my knee injury, I wouldn't have had to do the Open and Regionals. I could have focused my training to go to the Games. They changed that year, the rule in 2012. So, not doing the Opens meant that I didn't go to the Games. Also, they changed the scoring this year to how it's scored at the Games. If that scoring had been last year, then I would have also qualified. So I think that you don't deserve to go, but I think I'm just very unlucky with rule changes. <laughs> they never seem to fall in my favour. Best get training for next year. <laughs>one in particular, we went into the fire um, and it was at a big chemical plant and there was a lot of um, canisters that we were trying to like keep cool and stop the fire spreading to them because we didn't know what chemicals were in them. There must have been 20 of us on different lines in there and then all of a sudden some of the canisters um, caught hold and exploded and basically a flame front just went over the top of us all. So we're all laid on the floor with the hose up, just protecting us as this big, like, blue and green, because of the chemicals, flame front just, like, went over the top of us. So that was, that was pretty scary. You're just hoping that nothing messes up and you've got to trust the people that are outside the fire that they're going to keep the water to you. And that same job, the water runoff was going into the rivers and then we were pumping out of the rivers so we were ending up like recycling the chemicals and we were told that the chemicals were no more dangerous than uh, shampoo but as we were coming away from the job like the heels of our boots and stuff were all like disintegrating so we're like I don't think they were being that honest with us. <laughs> I definitely miss aspects of it. I miss like working with the guys. Some of the less desirable places are the best places to work. So then working in those areas, we used to get a lot of abuse. Kids in the area are bored and they don't like any sort of authority figure. People would throw things at us and set booby traps for us. And we've been like stoned before and bricked and things like that. Set a car on fire, but they'd put fireworks in the car, so like we'd go turn up to a car fire and then there'd be like fireworks launch, launching at us and stuff. But those are the best areas to work because you're busy. In the nicer areas, you don't tend to be as busy. You just go out and you put smoke detectors up for people and do fire inspections. I think most people join the fire service to put fires out, so it's probably the same crazy switch that makes me a good athlete. I started CrossFit in 2009. Did my first competition that November, just a small competition in Wales in the UK. Loved it, there was only three girls <laughs> competing, but it was, it was fun. I was very competitive uh, anyway. I was racing triathlons and duathlons. I'd always played competitive sports like football and rugby. So 
I've always had that competitive edge, so it was kind of the next step really. I enjoyed doing CrossFit, so to to make it competitive was, I suppose, a natural step for me. I first heard about the games pretty much straight away, as when I started CrossFit in 2009 was when the the games were um, taking place. So everybody in the the box was talking about it. So I got to see some of the footage. Uh, as a as a newcomer to to CrossFit and got talked into entering what was the sectionals for the games uh, in 2010. I don't think I realised the potential that I had to go to the games until I qualified for the games. Sectionals was kind of sold to me as it it would be fun. There was probably 10, maybe even 15 of us going going down to. Milton Hall, so it was more of a fun experience. And then I qualified. And then even regionals, there was a big group of us. We went, we got a house out in Sweden. I was drinking and eating a burger and pizza and stuff <laughs> the, the night before competing. So a little bit different to what I do now when I'm competing. <laughs> Because there was no expectations, it was fun. The year before 2009, it was at the ranch. So the craziness of the games hadn't really begun. 2010 was the first year in Carson. It was scary because you turn up to the Stub Hub Centre and it was massive. I have no idea who anybody is. And then there was this little me. The Friday night doing Amanda was just crazy. That was like my one rep max snatch at the time. I kind of like muscled my way through the muscle ups. I couldn't kick properly. I was just like, Ugh. but the squat snatches were interesting. The triple Helen, uh, because that was probably one of my best events. I won my heat for that one. And I wish that I'd have been in the final heat against Annie and Chris, because they were the only two to beat my time. I'm like, ah, oh, I could have pushed it a bit more. And then, there was the wheelbarrows. That will always stick in my mind as like one of the craziest but best events that I think I've done at the Games. We weren't told anything about the event. We were just told to warm up. We walked out into the tennis arena and there were wheelbarrows there. What are we doing? And then it became clear. They explained that there were sandbags. We had to jump over the wall, fill the wheelbarrows, run to the other side, throw them over, carry them up. Three, two, one, go. So you're like, ah, okay. And I thought that was brilliant. You've got to think on your feet. It's something that you don't normally train for or with. So it was like, yes, just use your fitness. I finished 19th that year, which was fantastic. I didn't have any expectations, so it was great. But on the same hand, I just missed out on getting into the final event. So I was sat in the stands with a giant beer, enjoying that, but also wishing that I'd have made it to the final event. And that's when I made the decision to um, do my last um, competitive race and then concentrate on CrossFit. So I qualified to represent GB for the World uh, Duathlon Championships in September 2010. And I'd already just bought a brand new carbon bike <laughs> to, as as like a present to myself for, for qualifying so I'm like I'm gonna have to do the race now um, so yeah I did I did that and that was that was my last competitive race I decided to just see what happened concentrated on CrossFit for for a year so I wanted to be back the next year and I wanted to be in the final the regionals were in England that year, so it was fantastic. Family come to watch and everything. The only thing that year was uh, our regionals were outside and it rained that day. So the muscle ups became very interesting. I don't advise chalking up before doing muscle ups in the rain. The chalk became paste, so the rings were very slippy. Qualifying second meant that I wasn't in the final heat of the game, so it was to try and like, claw my way to get into the final heat on that last day. That year was the first year they brought an endurance event, so we started on the Wednesday instead of the Friday night. Second to Julie Fouché. 
the softball throw. I've never even seen a softball before. I'm from England. We don't have softball. <laughs> So that was definitely interesting. I can't remember what distance I got, but I know I didn't get last. <laughs> the event was where you had to go for three minutes, back, then you get six minutes, back, and then finish the event. Won the six minutes and then won the, the final. Miranda Allroyd interviewed me afterwards, and she was like, what were you thinking when you were pulling that sled? I was like, it was so hot. I just imagined that there was an ice cold beer on that thing. And I pulled and pulled until that thing was there. Honestly, I finished that event and I hid in the shade for a minute just to like try and cool down before I went and like cheered everybody else on. That was the year that I finished fourth. I exceeded my expectations, but then also I'm like, oh, so close to the podium. That definitely fueled me to keep training and try and train harder, refocus on what the aims were, try to do a big strength cycle after the games, and then unfortunately uh, broke my kneecap. At the end of 2011, I first experienced pain with it. Probably a stress fracture at first, and then the final straw was landing a split jerk and I wasn't able to stand up from it, and that's when I think the force like finally broke. Maybe I should have gone to see a specialist straight away. The healthcare in the UK is a lot different to out here. You go see a doctor, they just try to give you some pain meds unless you pay to go private. Take painkillers, I'd train, I'd then not be able to do anything afterwards. It was just kind of a, a bit of a vicious circle. Who knows what I thought. It's, you kind of like live in denial, I think. You kind of try and put it to the back of your mind. It's that crazy thing again. I was turning 30, so I kind of in my head thought that 30 is like the oldest you can be. I needed to go to the games and attempt to win it at 30. I didn't think it'd be possible to go as somebody older than 30 and win the games. So that's why I was still trying to, to do it, still trying to train, still trying to compete even though I was in pain because for some reason in my head, I didn't think it would be possible to win the games as somebody over 30. So I think in my head, I thought this was my only chance. So I have to keep training. I have to go through this, even though I can't drive for more than 30 minutes without screaming. I went out to Texas to do an advanced gymnastics seminar. That's where I did the 12.1 against Kara Kepler. Did the advanced gymnastics seminar couldn't do a lot of the stuff, they were doing a lot of the bounding on the like sprung floor. Every time I tried to do anything like that, my knee would be like, ah! Flew back and the plane ride was just horrendous. And so that next day was when I had to go to the gym to meet my coach and my physio. And they're like, oh, you come into the gym? So I text them back, yeah, sure. Get there and there's only those two in the gym. I was like, hmm, this is a little bit weird. And they didn't even like say hi or anything to me. They're just like, we're pulling you from the games. I knew that it was the right thing to do. I didn't even fight him. And then jokingly, I'm like, did I really need to do seven minutes of burpees? Could you have not pulled me before that? <laughs> then it was find out really what was wrong with money as opposed to just trying to be in denial. And that's when we found out that I'd actually um, fractured the patella it was actually in two parts. Bone scan showed that it had already healed, but not fused together, so it would never knit. Uh, met with some surgeons. They couldn't guarantee that the scar tissue would be less painful than leaving the fragment in there. So with my uh, therapist, we made the decision to try and find a way around it, trying to rehab and come out of this injury the other end stronger with the fragments still in there. I still trained pretty much every day. I would go swimming with a boy in between my uh, legs. I'd do benching, I'd do a lot of strict gymnastics. I did anything and everything I could do to still be active. I was just given the all clear to start squatting again as the games were going on in 2012 contacted Lindsay. I tried to look and see who out of everybody has improved so much in the last few years. I'm like, she's cool. 
let's see if I can organize some training. And she was like, hell yeah, I'd love to. So I was like, right, let's make it happen. I'd met up with her when I went to train with Chris Cleaver at Valley. We're definite opposites. I come from an endurance background and she's definitely one of the stronger athletes out there. It worked really well. We'd push each other in different directions. I told myself that I wanted to make a real run at the games the next season, so I started saving up so that I could take a career break so I wasn't working as a firefighter. As the Opens began in 2013, I worked my last night shift. I felt great. The Opens went really well for me. I think I won the Open that year. Regionals went well for me. I won regionals. It just felt like it was the, the right decision to to miss 2012 and to obviously take the career break and be able to recover properly and train properly, train full time and then really concentrate on the games that year. It was definitely mentally a different competition like feeling wise than I've ever been. I didn't sleep right during the games and stuff and normally, normally I'm really good with things like that. I'm really relaxed, I'm really chilled but I think because I was on on top, missing the year before, and always being like, what do I need to do to not mess up? I think that definitely put a different stress on me to what I'm used to. It was a long time to be on the rower. I remember everybody getting their butts iced after, and I think I was the only one that went, oh, I need my arms icing. I've just done a half marathon with my biceps. The pool event, I beat Lindsay like by a small margin. I got out of the pool and she wasn't out yet, so I ran to her marker. It's like, she's a better swimmer than me. And I was like, ha oh, I beat you. She, she got out, she's like, how the hell are you there? <laughs> and I was sitting on top of the leaderboard and then it was kind of scary. Cause all weekend I wasn't competing thinking, what do I need to do to win this? All the time I was like, what do I need to do to not lose this? which was definitely a different way for me. I remember the rope climb very well. I love rope climbing. I do legless rope climbs, I do weighted rope climbs, I do upside down chameleon rope climbs. I'm like, yes, I like rope climbs. Me and Talena were in the same heat and I could hear the commentator saying that it's me and Spider Monkey, Talena, head to head. And we both blew up on that seventh rope climb. I just missed the beam and fell from the top. I think I climbed it another three or four times and I just didn't have the strength to do the last pull to hit that beam. And she was the same. Neither of us got past that seventh rope climb. I was like, why? Why did we go out and race each other? Why? <laughs> why didn't we stick to our game plan? Why don't I stay calm? I never do that. I'm always in, I'm always in my plan. Go at my pace, my pace only and that one workout I didn't and it so badly backfired on me. <laughs> if I'd have not won the games because of the point deficit of that workout, that would have been horrendous. I would have like beaten myself up for months about that. Luckily enough, it didn't make that much of a, a difference um, to my standings. I know that the adrenaline will get me through the final one, so as long as I don't make any mistakes, hopefully I'll still be at home one of those podium spots. I'm good at being able to bring myself round and relax when, when I need to. Um, when it was game time, that was it. It'd switch off and I'd go out and do what needed to be done. It was just crazy, because that was like two years of training. I missed 2012, that was a full two years. <laughs> We're in the tennis stadium after the final event and then they put the scoreboard up and that's when you find out if you've won.
then I saw Lindsay's name and Val's name and I was like, wow. This Saturday, I'd had a dream that us three were on the podium and then it was us three and we've done it. Like all that training, all that hard work and it's done. I don't think it finally sunk in until actually recently. If somebody was talking to me, they were just like, what did it feel like to have actually been the best at something? And I was like, yeah, I suppose that's, that's pretty cool. I'd never even thought about it. Whether I ever win it again doesn't make any difference. In 2013, I was the best at CrossFit. And it's like, it's pretty cool.